When the 1988 college football season began, it was the Florida State Seminoles atop the heap. Loaded with talent, they were everyone's preseason number one. But it only lasted a week as Miami taught them an early lesson. Despite the loss, Bobby Bowden still believed he could win it all. His team then ran off six straight wins. But in week eight, they were jolted with a drop from fifth to seventh in the AP poll. Bowden was furious, and he vented it with a 66-3 hammering of Louisiana Tech. But his message wasn't loud enough because this week, UPI dropped them to number eight. The Seminoles believe they're as good as anyone. Tonight, they try to convince the nation. With off-the-field distractions hanging over the head of the South Carolina football program, Joe Morrison had to wonder how his team would respond on the field. But like their coach, the Gamecocks were resilient. Linebacker Patrick Hinton keyed a big play defense with three interceptions and a fumble recovery. While quarterback Todd Ellis stood tall and shot down NC State in Raleigh. Tonight, over 72,000 have come to williams Bryce Stadium to welcome home the Gamecocks as South Carolina faces its biggest test against Florida State. it up tonight florida state number five in the nation south carolina number 15 we're at the home of the gamecocks williams Bryce stadium in columbia good evening i'm bob carpenter along with kevin Colley. it's an evening of aspirations here south carolina still aspiring to a major bowl florida state still to a possible national championship Let's talk about the Gamecocks defensively, Kevin. What surprises does Joe Lee Dunn and company have in store for us tonight? I don't know. If you're a defensive football player, you have to love playing for Joe Lee Dunn, the defensive coordinator of South Carolina. Pressure defense. They run around all night. They'll come after you. So what do they do last week against North Carolina State? They never play zone. They come out in the zone. And not only did they confuse North Carolina State and win the game, but Florida State sitting home watching the ball game, getting ready, saw a zone, and now they don't know what to do. They've had to change their game plan. And this is not the kind of defense you want to go after with anything less than your best people. Well, that's right, Bobby. It's because of the pressure. They make you make quick decisions. You need experience, especially at that quarterback position. He's got to be a guy who can recognize blitzes and make that quick decision, and they've got a problem there tonight. That's because Chip Ferguson is on the bench with a separated shoulder. So what about Peter Tom Willis? <laughs> what, what about Peter Tom Willis? Peter Tom Willis is the question mark. He's only thrown 47 passes all year. He needs to have success early in this game. If he completes a few early, they get that offense rolling, and Florida State's going to be tough. If he has a problem, it could be a disaster. A cool evening with great atmosphere here in Columbia. So down to the sideline. Here's Chris Fowler. Okay, thanks very much, Bob. Folks, a real treat tonight. You get to see one of the five best college football players in America. He is Deion Sanders, the quarterback for Florida State. He can dominate a game from that position. He's kind of college's version of Bo Jackson, an All-American in football, a pretty good baseball player drafted by the Yankees, and also an All-American sprinter in track. He qualified for the Olympic trials. One more thing you need to know about Dion. His nickname is Prime Time. Tonight is his element. He loves a big hostile crowd. They'll play to the cameras, and he loves to taunt the opposing team. Keep an eye on number two for Florida State. Bob? And number two and the Seminoles of Florida State in enemy territory. And a tradition of the Gamecocks here is to welcome the home team with the sounds of 2001.
presentation of CFA football is being brought to you by Michelob. One taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelob. By AT&T, the right choice. And by Casio Tone Bank Keyboard with real piano sound. Casio, where miracles never cease. The most interesting series it started not too long ago back in the 60s and Florida State has dominated it's been a high scoring series in the 80s and the last time they met two years ago when FSU came out on top in a typically high scoring ball game Joe Morrison is in his sixth year with the Gamecocks and he got number 100 up at NC State a ball game you saw here on ESPN a week ago. So the former New York Giant making a pretty good living for himself as a major college head coach as well. Big crowd here tonight, and they are into this one. What an introduction of the teams that was, Kevin Kiley. <laughs> this is a great place to do a ball game. It's just, uh, I've been here a number of times, and it's always exciting every time I come here. Florida State won the toss. They will defer until the second half, so they will kick it. You're looking at Richie Andrews, a sophomore. Number 49 is Robert Brooks, a freshman, as well as 27, Gerald Williams, a junior, back to receive it. And we're set for the Gamecocks against the Seminoles here in Columbia, South Carolina. The left footer puts it down to the two where Gerald Williams has it. Williams breaks it out over the 30. The ball is on the ground, but he had been called down. Let's check the Gamecocks offensively. Todd Ellis completing 55% of his passes is the quarterback. Fullback Keith Bing works in front of talented tailback Harold Green. Exciting freshman Robert Brooks and sophomore Anthony Parler, the wide receivers. Another receiver lining up the tight end, sophomore Carl Platt. Senior Randy Harwell, the center. The guards are Paul Shivers, the senior. Sophomore Calvin Stevens. Sophomore Mike Harris and junior Mark Fryer are the tackles. 31-yard line. Keith Bing and Harold Green behind Todd Ellis. A fake and out to the right side. It's Robert Brooks cutting it back in, looking to break it, and he's out over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Florida State defensively. It starts with the All-American Odell Haggins. He's the nose guard. The tackles are veterans Eric Hayes, an All-American last year, and fifth-year senior Steve Gabbard, Shelton Thompson, and John Hadley, the outside linebackers. Talented sophomore Kelvin Smith joined by senior Felton Hayes, an inside backer. Secondary talented Mr. Primetime Deion Sanders, as well as Tracy Sanders. And the safety stand Shiver and Dedrick Dodge. On second and four, it's Harold Green out near first down yardage. He had to get to the 41-yard line. Kelvin Smith, an inside backer, the strong side backer, on the stop number 36. Bobby Bowden. What a turnaround over the years at Florida State. He's in his 13th year. This program won 250 games in 41 years before he showed up. Not too many. They'll measure it as it was second and four. A little wobbling on the stick, and it's going to be third in about an inch or two. Six, seven. Calvin Stevens is the best lineman for South Carolina. He's their right guard, and he's the guy you need in short yardage you need to watch. Nothing fancy really about South Carolina. They'll pound it right at you when they run the ball. Third down conversions this year. They have an efficiency of 41%. And the Florida State defense spread out a bit. They don't necessarily expect a straight-ahead play here. That's what they're good, though. Harold Green breaks it out near midfield. Kelvin Smith rides him down a nine-yard gain on third and inches, and the Gamecocks have their first drive in progress. Well, this play was designed to go left, but watch Green. He doesn't follow his block. He sees something up the middle, and this is what Green can do to you. He's a tremendous back. He not only breaks it for a first down, but a little bit more. Harold Green maybe not as fit as he was a week ago after the week off, but... He's still taking it pretty well, and he's been riddled by some nagging injuries this season. First and 10 at the 49. Two men to the right. Ellis looking that way, and gambling. Deion Sanders almost took that one back for six. I want you to watch number two. They say he has tremendous closing speed. He'll play off, but he'll come up fast. Watch how quick this guy runs. 
Look at that. If that ball was on the mark, it might have been intercepted. Now, I'm surprised. It's man coverage. They go right after everybody's All-American, Deion Sanders. That's confidence in Ellis, but I don't know if it's wise. Maybe the last time you see that pass tonight. Trent Simpson is in there. Ike Harris also in a tight end position. The ball is fumbled at midfield, and the Seminoles have it. Kelvin Smith, 36. Harold Green on the turnover. Deion Sanders leads his teammates off the field after the turnover. Well, Harold Green never did have this ball. He kicks it right there on the handoff, and now it's loose. Just a matter of where it ends up, and it ends up in Florida State's hands. The early part of the game will be a key for Peter Tom Willis, a 6'3 junior quarterback for Florida State. He is expected to be pressured all night long. To the deep man, that's Chris Parker, a six-foot freshman. Let's meet the Seminoles offensively. With Ferguson injured, they go with junior Peter Tom Willis at quarterback. Fullback Dwayne Dane Williams is very good in short yardage. The tailback, freshman Chris Parker. Juniors Ronald Lewis and Terry Anthony following a long line of great FSU wide receivers. Senior Tom O'Malley, the start at tight end. Michael Tanks tries to anchor center, a problem position this year. The guards, Tony Yeomans and Jason Pipers. Head tackle, seniors Joey Ayanata and All-American Pat Tomberlin, one of the Seminoles' best ever on the offensive line. They got six on first down. Willis with time. Long to the end zone. And a score to Terry Anthony. 44 yards, and the visiting team takes the lead two and a half minutes in. Andrews, 37 of 37 this year. A little bit to his left, but through the uprights, and only two and a half minutes into the game, Florida State strikes with a big play of 44 yards. Well, it's a big play defense. We talked about it. He gets enough protection. Watch Willis. He's going to get hit after he throws it. But Terry Anthony, who had 24 catches coming in against that man-to-man -man coverage, he beats the Fane Williams, and it was all over. And we talked about how the early part of the game would be so important to the confidence of Peter Tom Willis. He just threw his fourth touchdown pass of the year, and it's 7-0 Seminoles, as the crowd for the moment in Columbia is very shocked. And the stadium here in Columbia, very quiet for being only two minutes and 34 seconds into the game. The Gamecocks will receive their second kickoff from the foot of Richie Andrews, trailing now 7-0 after that big play. Out of bounds on the near side toward Robert Brooks. They'll back it up and kick it once more. Kicking out of bounds is something we expect to see on punting tonight. Yeah. South Carolina punts to Deion Sanders and company. Let's go back to that touchdown. One of the main concerns was the center position. Michael Tanks, the fourth center to play, number 68 for Florida State. Whether or not he could give him pass protection, he's holding a little bit there. He gives him just enough time to get that pass off. That is a concern. Another concern for South Carolina was, and Joe Morrison, as you look at him, is whether or not Florida State would get away with holding. They're famous for doing a little bit of holding, and they were going to talk to the officials before the game. You saw an example there of maybe a little bit of holding, and I'm sure that the officials' attention will be brought to that. It was a scoring drive, mainly through the air. Half the field in two plays. Less than a minute, Terry Anthony. Gathered in his seventh touchdown catch of the year. His longest had been 26, so he can add 44 on to that. At the seven will be Robert Brooks. Cutting, slanting to his right. 
out near the 23, maybe the 24-yard line after an 18-yard return. So we'll see the Gamecocks offensively for the second time this evening. They're averaging 115 yards a game on the ground, 230 through the air, and outscoring their opponents 24 to 12. Todd Ellis, of course, is on a pace, as we mentioned last week, to surpass the former San Diego State star, Todd Santos, as the number one passer all time in Division 1A. The pitch is to Harold Green. Bounced out at the night, or rather the 29 or so. Tracy Sanders, 16 Tracy up Sanders. to get him. A little pursuit outside by nose star guard Odell Haggins. Coach Al Groh, the offensive coordinator for the Gamecocks, concerned about some of these guys on Florida State's team that can really wreck things for you defensively, Kev. That's what Al called them, Bobby. Game wreckers, and he set his protection against Sanders, Moss, and Dinkins. Moss and Dinkins really play in passing situations so they wouldn't disrupt his offense. Yeah, and there are a couple of young guys. Moss is sophomore, Dinkins a freshman. They don't even start. Green off the left side. Hit hard there, and there's some sticking going on down there on the part of the Seminoles in red and gold. John Hadley from right defensive end, 21 right there, in on the stop. South Carolina needs to take advantage of their personnel. They feel they can run the long trap. You see it here with Stevens and Fryer coming, coming to the other side. The Seminoles are playing basic pass defense on first down against uh, South Carolina. They're almost giving them the run and taking away the pass early. Third and two at the 32. No, sir. Harold Green taken down hard. Odell Haggins. He's had a bad ankle this season. He returned against Louisiana Tech a couple of years ago, a couple of weeks ago. It seemed like a couple of years ago for the Texters, though. They had three yards rushing that day. Yeah, that was a long day for them. Haggins is a guy that they call a natural leader. They say he's somebody that whether he plays 100% on the field because of an injury or not, he's a natural leader. There's another natural leader, a guy that's very dangerous on punts. In these situations, in Tallahassee, the folks are up on their feet waiting for a punt return. The kicker is Rodney Price. They were coming, and he just got it away. End over end, over the near sideline at the 47-yard line of South Carolina. Great pressure by Alan Stewart on special teams. And South Carolina now, as a flag has been thrown, celebrating a possible roughing the kicker. Well, I, I think it might be offsides on Stewart. I don't know. Th this, I, I, they blocked 33 punts since Bobby Bowden took over Florida State. I mean, this is an offensive play for Florida State. It was offsides on him, Bobby. And, uh, and their, punt, their punt return team is a weapon, and I mean a big weapon. Watch the right side of your screen here, Stewart. I, I believe he got a hand on this ball. No, he didn't. They were trying to block. They were trying to kick it out of bounds, but the pressure forced them to just yank it. That's a big break, that offsides penalty. So instead of the defense being on the field at their own 47-yard line, South Carolina's offense will have it at the Gamecock 38. We're just over four minutes into the game. It's been eventful so far. They split the backs this time. Little play action to the first man through Green, and then up the middle, and a nice catch by Carl Platt, the sophomore tight end. He was the leading receiver in terms of yardage coming in with 410, averaging 15 yards a catch, and a flag on that play as well. Holding on the defense. Holding. That's not the kind of holding that Joe Morrison told them to look for. Yeah. It was on offense, but coming this one will move it out further. Coming into this game, Bobby, 59 penalties, 523 yards against Florida State. Two penalties already here early in the first quarter. So the ball has moved across midfield. It's actually just beyond the 49 of Florida State. On the near side, Eddie Miller caught a touchdown pass a week ago. The backs are back in the eye. 
little movement on the left side of the defensive line as Harold Green fights his way inside the 45 of Florida State. Kelvin Smith on the stop, but again, early movement by the Seminoles. Well, that's a play. When you're playing defense, you go on movement. You're supposed to watch if you're close to the ball. You pretty much keep your eye on the ball and the player in front of you. That far out on the defense, you have to look at, you don't move unless the guy in front of you moves. Now, what this might be is a staggered snap count by Ellis, left side of your screen, Eric Hayes. And they hike the ball, of course, as soon as he enters the neutral zone, the center should hike the ball because it's a free play. Luckily, they had the play called to that side, so they had him out of position. So flags hurting the Seminoles now. South Carolina just flagging its way to a first down again. There's the pitch to Green, short side of the field. And he slants his way out of bounds right around the 40-yard line, maybe got over the 40, near first down yardage. Odell Haggins got him. Harold Green is averaging three and a half yards a carry, got a touchdown last week. He's missed about 10 quarters of football this year, Kevin, and still has some pretty good statistics, and we saw last week with the combination of him and Mike Dingle late in the game, Joe Morrison has some good backs to go tandem with if he wants to. They have tremendous backs. In fact, I said last week, Bobby, we talked about the fact that South Carolina may have the best three backs in the country. If you count all three of them, they're very talented. First down at the 38. Harold Green again. Looks like the left tackle, Eric Hayes, got him. This is the first time that Florida State's front line has been healthy since the Miami game. There's Zal Groh, the offensive coordinator of the Gamecocks. Very bright individual who's filled us in on their offense the last couple of weeks. Nice man. Uh, former head coach at Wake Forest, those in the ACC may remember him. And what he does early in the game, he'll sequence plays to get a look at different defenses from Florida State. Then he'll make determinations on what he wants to run for the rest of the game. Yeah, he calls that making contact, waiting for the home run later. Second down and eight. Ellis with a deep drop and a lot of time. Intercepted. Stan Shiver, the strong safety. That's his second of the year in his ninth career interception. Plays the strong safety position. He was freelancing as the center fielder back there, and the ball was basically delivered right to his numbers. Well, this is one of the problems they've had with Todd Ellis. Now, the protection is super here. They do a tremendous job. Ellis has all day. He's going to sit back there. Shiver is one of the guys. He didn't call him a game wrecker, but he said he was very dangerous, Al Groh did, and here's why. There's really nothing here. Ellis throws it right into the hole. That ball was behind the receiver to begin with. Safety sitting there and makes the interception. Ellis has had a problem with interception. He's now thrown 15 on the year and 10 in his last four games. On the run, Peter Tom Willis delivering it to Ronald Lewis, a six-foot junior out of Jacksonville, who is the most explosive of the four receivers and the two tight ends. They will rotate in and out of the ball game. Well, one of the things you can do against the pressure defense, South Carolina sending seven and eight men all the time, is roll out your quarterback. Willis mobile enough to get outside, and then the speed of those receivers will create problems. Pressure defense has got to get to the quarterback. If it doesn't, you've got problems. First down at the 47. <laughs> 35 is Chris Parker. Let's meet the Gamecocks defensively now. Sophomore Tim High is the nose guard for the Gamecocks. Freshman Marty Dye, senior Derek Frazier, the tackles. SC's best defensive player, senior Kevin Hendricks, a defensive end with junior David Taylor. The linebackers, senior Derek Little, fighting a knee problem, and last week's hero, sophomore Patrick Hinton. Veterans Robert Robinson and Stephon Williams play the corners, while Scott Windsor, a converted defensive end, Dale Campbell with Pat Turner hurt, starting at safety. Free safety Ron Rebune, the number one tackler of the Gamecocks, could see action coming back from injury here tonight. Second and ten. Peter Tom Willis with time, and Ronald Lewis, a yard and a half beyond the first down marker, gathers it in. Robert Robinson on the coverage, but not a whole lot he could do. And we're seeing the strength of the arm of this young man that Bobby Bowden crowed about yesterday. Yeah, they talked about it might be a factor. His arm is actually a little stronger than Ferguson. He pulls up. This is a great catch by Lewis. They said that gun arm might help him. It helped him right there because the coverage was there. 
Lewis is a possession receiver that runs 4-3-5 in the 40. That's scary. First and 10 at the 42 of South Carolina. Chris Parker, the freshman, bouncing ahead for several. Patrick Hittner, the inside linebacker, who had the big game a week ago with three interceptions, a fumble recovery against NC State. Number 46 is the big reason the Gamecocks went to Raleigh and came back with a W. Both teams come into the game with a record of 7-1. Second and seven. Dexter Carter is in. They'll rotate Carter and Parker some. We may see Sammy Smith the tailback tonight as well. A slant in pattern across the middle, and Terry Anthony has it. Anthony, a six-foot junior out of Daytona Beach, averaging 16 yards a catch. And Peter Tom Willis has it right on the mark. Very well-designed play. Short drop. They've used motion to pull the safety out of there, and then a quick slant to the receiver. Watch. They pull the safety the other way. You have a wide open slant there, and Peter Tom delivered the ball. He had Derek Frazier looking right in between his face mask and short armed it for a first down. It's first and 10 at the 25. First man through, Dane Williams, the fullback. He's a key man in short yardage. Don't forget about him when they get down near the goal line in what they call their wham offense. They've had some difficulty, Bobby, running the ball in short yardage this year, and the reason has been because of the center position. We showed you Mike Tanks earlier, what a fine job he did. It's basically the same offensive line they had last year, except for the center position. They've had to make some adjustments to cover for that position, and they have not run the ball as well as they have in previous years. So when they get inside the 10, they're more of a finesse team than they have been previously. A story emerging in the secondary of South Carolina as Ron Rabune is in for the first time in several weeks. To the end zone, and out of bounds, Terry Anthony. Came down with it beautifully, but he was over the line. We do have a flag on the play sitting at the 32-yard line. The line of scrimmage was the 23, so back in the Holden. offensive backfield. Now this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is not only holding, this is outrageous holding. They're protecting Willis. There's your blocking in the center of the line where it happens is in the backfield. There's not too much holding there. There are some people dragged down here. You're going to see just before he... Look on the right of your screen. We're talking tackling here. The official right there, and then the end of the play, you can see his feet are out of bounds. Now, South Carolina made a point of this, that they were going to talk to the officials about holding. Florida State has a history of holding. It's totally done right there. And for a defensive coordinator, you know he'd rather be on the field. He's got to watch. Peter Tom Willis, perfect so far. It's second and long. Nothing much there to Dexter Carter. Right in the middle of your screen there, you see number 15 in the black jersey. That is Ron Rabune of South Carolina. He dislocated his shoulder at Georgia Tech a couple of weeks ago, was not able to start or even play at NC State. He's listed third in the depth chart at free safety, and they have another injury there. Pat Turner, who played last week, has a groin pull, so the senior Rabune, a good tackler with all that experience required in there right now for Joe Lee Dunn. They absolutely must have him, Bobby. You're right. He's a guy, uh, when you play this type of defense, you've got to have a safety that does not make mistakes. Rabune is that type of player. They have to get to the 15 for a first down. It's third down and 17. Set time and maybe a fumble. The arm evidently was not in motion to throw. David Taylor from right outside linebacker all over Peter Tom Willis. Gamecocks have it. Uh, folks, this booth is shaking. Peter Tom Willis has more time than he should ever need to throw this ball. Taylor is finally going to get him from behind. This causes the fumble. The blocking was excellent. Willis has got to understand, and he doesn't play that often as you see him recover the fumble against the pressure defense. Even if you don't see it, it's coming. You've got to get rid of the ball. 
And in this stadium, there's nobody that's going to let you know either. And this booth is shaking, Bobby. I, I may be getting out of here today. <laughs> Mike Dingle is in there on first down at the 40. He's got the deep pitch, and here he goes. This guy is dangerous. A sophomore out of Monk's Corner, South Carolina. He is the tailback of the future. And it's interesting, Kevin, he sees a lot of time at fullback at this stage of his career, but so did a couple of guys. Uh, oh, Marcus Allen comes to mind, who later won a Heisman to tailback at Southern Cal. He was backing up Charles White. I'm not sure Mike Dingle will win a Heisman, but he is the guy who will be getting that deep pitch in the future at this school. Second and five at the 45. Clock runs with 435 first quarter. 7-0 Florida State. Nobody to hand it off to, and then Todd Ellis lost his footing, and that'll cost them five. It'll be third and ten. Well, let me make a point. You made a point about Dingle. The reason he is not in there all the time at fullback or tailback is he has been slow picking up the offense, and you saw a blown play there. Now, Bing was the fullback. Dingle was the tailback, and there was nobody to hand the ball to. That was a broken play. Dingle, they say his concentration has got to be better before they can make him a full-time back. He's behind fullback Keith Bing on third, and they'll call it a long nine. They still pitch it to him. And he'll be short by about four yards. Felton Hayes, the weak side linebacker, up to get him. And it'll be a fourth down play near midfield. Kicking time for the Gamecocks. And it's prime time. Prime time. You may wonder about that call as you watch Sanders get ready for this punt. That was a pretty good call. They had an inside blitz. They pitched it outside and had a chance to go. Rodney Price averaged 42 yards. A kick, and it's blocked down inside the 10. And easily into the end zone is Florida State. Anthony Moss. We talked about the game wreckers, and there he is on the special team. Phil Carollo, a backup outside linebacker, the one on the block, and then the touchdown by Anthony Moss. So the big play, big for Florida State twice now in the first quarter. Well, we talked about, you know, we, we talked about they blocked 33 punts since Bobby Bowden took over. I can't imagine that they would get that kind of pressure that easily on a punt with the history that Florida State has. That makes 39 in a row for the extra point kicker, Richie Andrews. All right, the guy that blocks it is Carollo, number 33. And you're going to see him come in here. This is Carollo here, number 81, excuse me, making the block, the 34th block, since Bobby Bowden took over. Anthony Moss picks it up, and he's in the end zone. So with 3.18 remaining in the first quarter of play, a long pass, a block punt, and the Seminoles lead by 14. On top in the third quarter, Kentucky over Vanderbilt in the SEC. Wake Forest has taken care of the Blue Devils today. Disappointing loss for Duke after that great start. And other scores from around college football. So South Carolina has to try to mount a drive again. They start this time deep back at their own 18. Todd Ellis is two for four for 19 yards and has had one picked off. Feeling his way, Harold Green. There's a look at Corey and Freeman, a sophomore out of Jacksonville who spells Tracy Standard. Tracy Sanders, you never hear about the right cornerback on this team, do you? They say he's an excellent player, a pro prospect, Tracy <laughs> Sanders. Yeah, but, but nobody right. will know that until next year. <laughs> no. Dion gets all the prime time. Harold Green, nine rushes, 33 yards, and a fumble. He toted the ball 24 times against NC State a week ago. They're looking his way again. He was up the middle, then tried to go to his right. Odell Haggins, the nose guard. 
53 met him head on. Kevin, remember the replay we had recently when they saw three offensive linemen trying to bat this guy down? This guy's got both ankles these days. They watch him get blocked, and that's a typical spin move for a middle guard, and he's right there. Huh. You fight pressure. That's all that is. That's what they tell you to do. Fight. If they're trying to push you to the left, go to the right. And there are very few big people who can make the move as well as Hagen's does. Very important third and a long three. They've actually got to get three and a half yards here. All right. Ellis has time. 41 is Anthony Parler. Ellis. Out near Anthony first down Parler. yardage. Had to get to the 28 and a half yard line. Deion Sanders and Kelvin Smith in on the stop. And it is a South Carolina first down. They'll restart the clock momentarily with a minute 46 remaining in the first quarter of play. Major concern for Al Groh, the offensive coordinator, and Joe Morrison was they didn't want to get into a game of big plays. Well, they're in a game of big plays. Florida State has hit two of them. So far, South Carolina has not. Eddie Miller, explosive freshman, bottom of your screen. They'll go deep to the eye for Harold Green, short side. Pretty good yardage on first down. Tracy Sanders from right corner. Knocking him down and not quite out of bounds as the clock continues to move. Strength of this team is the secondary. We talked about Deion Sanders, Tracy Sanders. Shivers is the guy that made the interception earlier. And what Florida State is doing is they're stacking their defense inside, trying to force South Carolina wide into that secondary because they're so quick and they come up so fast they can make the play. Deion Sanders, four interceptions this year, two of them for touchdowns. Second and five at the 34. A pump fake to the left. Now he's waiting and down the middle, and it's picked off by Leroy Butler. He will get down inside the 25 of South Carolina, and Todd Ellis has dumped the ball into heavy coverage again. Well, now they're booing here in South Carolina. This is old punt Ruski now. Leroy Butler, the pump, he never goes for it. Number six is still sitting in the hole, but Ellis never looks. He just figures he's going to be open, see? Butler's just sitting there waiting, and that's what an experienced, talented secondary can do for you, and that's what Florida State has. A junior, a big guy, 60190, and you may remember him, 78 yards against Clemson with a fake punt. Leroy Butler has his second interception of the year. Sammy Smith is in there for Florida State. 33, the tailback. There he is. Inside the 15. Down to the 13 and a half yard line. Sammy, the 6'2 junior out of Zellwood, Florida. He's missed the last three games because of injury. He's averaging five yards a carry. Still leads the team in carries and yardage. Heisman candidate when the season began. A lot of publicity. A lot of people on this team big players and Smith was one of them he got off to a slow start and then the injuries and the emergence of some of the other tailbacks tremendous amount of talent and Sammy's kind of taking a back seat but he's a good strong power runner maybe a great runner when he's healthy Bobby Bowden unhappy about having star players injured at the same time well most of them are back but now he's without his quarterback but as the first quarter comes to an end looks like Great Peter work. Tom Willis has filled the bill Seminoles 14 Gamecocks nothing in Second quarter underway as soon as the ball is snapped. Florida State second and three at the South Carolina 14-yard line. On the move with a two-touchdown lead already. Motion man is Lawrence Darcy. And it's out to the left side. Dane Williams, the fullback, catching the football. Out of bounds inside the five where strong safety Scott Windsor knocked him out. Well, Scott Windsor, they call him a safety, but what he is is a linebacker, so this is a pretty good call. You've got linebacker coverage. Windsor's 225 pounds, and Williams just outruns him to the sideline. They don't want, he's not in there for pass coverage. He's in in that pressure defense as a linebacker run defender type. On first and goal at the three, three tight ends in there. And again, watch for number 49, Dane Williams, the fullback. He goes off the left side. Got a little forward progress before he was pushed back. Ron Rabune coming up from free safety. Watch number 15 after number 49. Uh, this guy, number 15, Rabune, had a dislocated shoulder just two weeks ago. He throws it in there, dislocation and all. 
Now, Florida State will run to the strength of their formation. They'll put three tight ends in. The fella in the backfield, who's it's like a slot, but there's not even enough room to call him a slot, is a tight end. They have a tendency to run towards him, but they are also a finesse team, and they will use trickery when needed. Sammy Smith is behind the fullback on second and goal at the two. A fake to the fullback. Rolling is Willis, and a touchdown pass. Easily executed for number 83. That's the tight end, Dave Roberts. Well, this is what makes him so tough. I just told you, they like to run to the strength. So what do they do? They send everybody that way. Play action. It's a naked reverse waggle, whatever you want to call it, and then a wide open receiver. Very tough play against a strong offensive line. Defensively, you've got to honor the run. Florida State knows that. Brilliant call on the goal line. Richie Andrews for his third point after. Right down the middle. So 54 seconds into the second quarter, it's Peter Tom Willis completing a touchdown pass for the second time tonight. This one a little bit shorter, but it's 21-0. Peter Tom Willis getting the start ahead of the injured Chip Ferguson. Number 83 on the receiving end, Dave Roberts. And it's 21-0, the story from Columbia. Miscues by the home team, a couple of interceptions, a fumble, a blocked kick, and 21 Florida State points as a result. The matchup of quarterbacks, not much of a matchup right now. No, Peter Tom Willis taking over. That's enough turnovers for a season. Robert Brooks lets it bounce. It's through his legs. He's got to play it. Finally picks it up at his one-yard line. And South Carolina, after the tackle by Corey and Freeman on special teams, will have poor field position. Todd Ellis conferring with Al Groh, the offensive coordinator. Todd Ellis, when he's throwing the ball well, you can look at the touchdown passes. Yeah, with 26 interceptions when he's throwing it well, he's still, yeah, he has a history of throwing a lot of interceptions. I think that's what that graphic shows you. Even when he's good, he's still got a problem with it. Means your defense has to do a little more work as well. First and 10 at the 13, Harold Green cutting up the sideline near a first down. Yeah. You saw his acceleration. Howard Dinkins, that redshirt freshman, is one of those game wreckers. Number 89 in on the action over there on the sideline as well. Dinkins, four sacks on the year. You see him a lot in nickelback situations. He can get to the quarterback and make the big play. Boy, South Carolina's got to get a drive without a mistake here. Good yardage on first down. Actually close enough to measure over there. <laughs> South Carolina had the football for 40 minutes against North Carolina State a week ago. They would probably have the ball possession edge here tonight so far as well. But it's been the quick scoring of Florida State offensively, defensively, and on special teams. The difference here. It'll be second and one. Harold Green vaulting blockers and tacklers. Looks like his forward motion took him across the needed yardage. 21-0 here in Columbia with the visiting team on top. Louisville still playing well, leading Tech in the third. Memphis State early. The Zips on top of the Aggies. That's in the fourth quarter. And the Colonels on top at halftime. 13 and a half minutes remaining before halftime. Todd Ellis gives it to Harold Green. Anthony Moss, Eric Hayes, Howard Deacons all flying to the football defensively. Harold Green's already carried the ball 14 times. 
58 yards and has coughed it up once. Had three touchdowns against the Wolfpack a week ago in that 23-7 win. There's the situation here at the home of the Gamecocks. They need a good drive, maybe a big play or two, to get this crowd back in the game. Play action. Ellis with lots of time, and the only person that could have caught that was the man holding the marker. A flag on the play. Steve Gabbard, no flags, pardon me. Steve Gabbard, the man, in the area pressuring the quarterback, but that's a rather unusual throw. Well, that, that's what they want him to do. What uh, Florida State did, they sat in a zone. They were sure it was going to be passed. It was passed. Ellis had absolutely nowhere to go. Had he done that earlier on a couple of those throws, it wouldn't be 21 to nothing. That's what Al Groh, you see Al there, what he's been trying to get Ellis to do, get rid of the ball. Third and six at the 29. And off the hands there of Keith Bing, the fullback. And Florida State has had everything going their way on the road so far. And as if things aren't bad enough, it's prime time again. You have to worry about the pressure on the kicker, and then if you get it away, making sure you don't give Deion Sanders something to work with. He's averaging almost 19 yards a return. A low line drive. Sanders gathers it at the 32. Gamecocks have it covered pretty well, but he's still not down. Finally, about five or six catch up. Deion Sanders improvising, 37 on the kick, four on the re to you by Mazda and the exciting new Mazda cars and trucks for 1989. By Atra Plus, Gillette made it smoother. And by the U.S. Army, learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. With Kevin Kiley and Chris Fowler, Bob Carpenter here in Columbia. Home team down by three touchdowns as Peter Tom Willis has been the story of this game so far for Florida State at quarterback, spelling the injured Chip Ferguson. They will run the reverse. Now they threaten to pass off it, and Ronald Lewis keeps the football and maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. They, of course, will at least fake the reverse almost every time they run the sweep, so the defense has to be alert at all times. That's a tough, tough play to make work against this defense. You see, look at the black shirts as they go right, so you see why they run it. But David Taylor, number 42, is going to come up from the inside here, reacts very quickly. The contain is there, and they're able to stop it. I'm sure they were well-versed. One of the problems getting ready for Florida State is trick plays, so you practice a lot against them during the week. Derek Frazier was the containment man. Timeout has been called by the Seminoles. So the clock stops with 11.42 second quarter, 21-0 in favor of the visitors. And Chris Fowler, they came in here confident tonight, didn't they? They did, but there's some stunned folks right now and some black jerseys on the South Carolina sideline. This just doesn't happen to them in Williams White Stadium. We've talked about the fact that they've won 13 games in a row here at Florida State, the last team to beat them. Now they're just kind of walking around with a glassy look in their eye, trying to pump each other up, talking about regrouping, but this is unheard of for most of these players, guys. Well, this is an even game is what it is. It's, it's an even game with the exception of a couple of interceptions and the special teams, the block punt. It's not a matter of offense and defense. They're pretty even when you get the offense and defense. Well, following our game tonight, John Saunders will be on Sports Center to bring you a top 20 wrap and bring you up to date on the rest of the day in sports. Finally, then, at 11.30 p.m., a major baseball special you won't want to miss. The Major League Baseball 1988 Japan All-Star Tour, a team of Major League stars led by Oral Hershiser, the World Series MVP. They'll take on the Japanese All-Star team in Tokyo. John Miller and Don Sutton call the action tonight later on ESPN. Second and 10 at the 35. Here's Lawrence Dawsey with it. And he's got blockers accompanying him across midfield, feeling his way for more yardage. And finally inside the 30-yard line, Robert Robinson finally able to make the stop 40 yards on the play for the Seminoles. I tell you, Bobby, I almost jumped out of the booth to make this tackle myself. I was the closest one to the ball. <laughs> they run this thing twice in a row. There is literally not a block. There's nobody to block. Look at this thing. Nobody shows up. 
20 yards, 30 yards. Finally, somebody shows up in the open field. These are linemen out there. Those are offensive linemen downfield, and they had to go 40 yards to find somebody to block part of their offense. A great call. Two in a row. Joey Ionato, 69, went all the way down there with left guard Mike Morris, number 60. And here's Sammy Smith. Pumping his way down near the 20. Those guard Tim High got him. But it's all Florida State right now. Bobby Bowden, the master of trickery. Special teams, offense, defense. He always seems to have something up that crimson sleeve of his. Right now he has a two-to-one advantage in total yards. Let's make a point here. It was not trickery, however, that got them on top in this game, Bobby. It was that long pass to start and a block punt. Second and six at the 21. Gamecox coming, but were they drawn offside? Heard Wilson and Tim High across the line of scrimmage. Offside, defense, second down. Watch Peter Tom's head right here just before they jump. Watch that. See that move right there? Yeah, a little hip action. A little hip action. And that's, I don't know, that's borderline. If he does that on every play, it's okay. But I'm not so sure he does it on every play. That little twitch brought about three guys. Second and one at the 16. Peter Tom Willis firing successfully six straight times. Dave Roberts, a tight end who caught a touchdown pass recently, has checked in for the Seminoles. Two tight ends set with Roberts and Tom O'Malley. And it's too far for Ronald Lewis. Second and one, kind of a throwaway down. Uh, throw the ball and see what happens. It's still third and one. When you're playing defense and you're down 21 to nothing at home in the second quarter, backed up to your own goal line, your brain is fried when you go to the line of scrimmage. They can do anything. Down and distance doesn't matter, you know, and that's that's the most difficult and frustrating thing about this. This is a proud defense. Their pressure hasn't worked. Their coverage hasn't worked. Their special teams haven't worked. And they're in big trouble. And Joe Lee, really, I don't know what he can do at this point. Trying to tackle somebody. They have three tight ends in on third and one. Sammy Smith. Tackle for a loss. Patrick Hinton got him well behind the line of scrimmage. And the big play that South Carolina was looking for defensively. Against pressure, very difficult to run wide. I mean, they're selling out. They have nothing to lose. Watch hit left side of your screen. 46, takes on the block. He's going to go down, but he keeps his head up. So he knows where the ball carrier is, and he gets Smith. Fought off Tom O'Malley and still made the tackle. Patrick Hinton, a big play sophomore. We've seen him now two weeks in a row. Richie Andrews, 5 of 11. This is a 37-yarder. He's been erratic this year, and that one is off to the left. They have Bill Mason, who kicks from short range, but they went with a long-range man there. Still 21-0 in the second quarter. We talk all the time about football players having guts and courage on the field, but that's nothing compared to a story this past week where a player showed an amazing amount of courage off the field. His name is Mark Say. He's a wide receiver for Long Beach State. Now, he was attending a Halloween costume party last weekend when the partygoers were attacked by gang members. And Mark Say stepped in front of a three-year-old girl to take a bullet and protect her. The good news is he's recovering nicely out of the hospital early next week. We certainly salute his courage. Yes, we do, Chris. Thank you so much. Todd Ellis looking for something. And finally, going down out around the 25-yard line, ran about 30 yards to gain a couple. And, of course, Mark Say, Long Beach State, a true hero. And his football career could be in jeopardy because of that. But what a man. I think with all the stories you hear about college football that are not great, I think that is a great story. That's, uh, you can't do anything more than put your body in front of something like that. Certainly our best wishes and prayers to Mark if he's watching this one here tonight. Second and five, Ellis pitches to Harold Green. Maybe to the line of scrimmage. Tripped up beautifully in the backfield by Phil Carullo, a 6'2 senior. 
So he's the fellow. Third and six. Excuse me, Bobby. He's the fellow that blocked the punt, a walk on. He's worked his way up against some pretty good talent in front of him, and they have some great outside linebackers on this team. Corello's a guy who's found his way into the lineup and made a contribution, certainly tonight, with that block punt. Hard to figure how a walk on with this team would get any playing time at all. They redshirt all of their freshmen. They recruit tremendous athletes. It's third and six for South Carolina. That one had some zip and it was tipped and Harold Green held on. Great concentration by the tailback on the best reception of the night for the home team. Antonio Moss, number 99 in white, comes into this game. He's a backup end with 4.5 sacks. His best, their, their best pass rusher, Florida State. They do a nice job on him. And then Ellis, again, he gets the ball tipped by the secondary, but Green with two receivers in the same area. Leroy Butler over there, too, makes the catch. So out the 46-yard line, the Gamecocks with a first down. Green, short side again. Bumped out of bounds by Tracy Sanders, the right cornerback. 21-0, Florida State leading here. Notre Dame, number one, hammering Rice today. SC doing the same to the Bears of California. Miami, the same to Tulsa. All the big teams are winning big today. UCLA had a bit of a fight with Oregon on the road. Oregon, very fine team. Second and nine at the 47. Fake pitch to the left, roll out right, has to dump it. Good pressure back there by 93, Shelton Thompson, the left outside linebacker. Trent Simpson, the intended receiver, but it was the pressure of Thompson that dictated the quick throw. Well, Tom, Tom, there's not supposed to be anybody here. This is a naked kind of a rollout, and Ellis, I think, is surprised to see Thompson. Again, that ball has got to be thrown perfectly because the coverage is excellent by Florida State. They're playing pass now, and it's going to be very difficult if they don't establish a running game. Intended receiver and pass interference as Tracy Sanders was all over Anthony Parler. That was kind of a crazy play right from the start. Odell Haggins, the nose guard, slipped, so there was no pressure at all on Todd Ellis. Well, they had a blitz, and they picked it up very well. The offensive line did a nice job. There was crossing patterns going both ways across the field. Sanders was there, but he got there a little bit too early. Coverage really wasn't that bad again. Pass interference on the defense, spot foul, first down. Again, you see the coverage. The coverage is really not that bad, and I don't know if that ball could have been caught, but Sanders did grab him before the ball got there, so that's that's a penalty. Tracy Sanders out, Corey and Freeman in. First down at the 43 of Florida State. Harold Green. Harold Green. Maybe three yards. Odell Haggins, the nose guard. Kelvin Smith, the inside linebacker on the stops. Clock runs, 7.05 before halftime. South Carolina has to get on the board on this drive. Harold Green is checked out. Mike Dingle is in. You saw number three, Eddie Miller, check in. He'll come to the bottom of your screen on second and seven. I'd be thinking run here with Green out of the game. Mike Dingle looking to throw. And this will be easily picked off by Dedrick Dodge. Back to the 25-yard line. Dingle was hit as he was throwing it and got absolutely nothing on the toss. For a team that runs so many trick plays, they certainly don't get fooled too often. Tremendous pressure. I told you, I'd be thinking run. The reason is Green's a better receiver. That's why I said that. Well, here's the pressure on the corner. And the ball is either tipped or just not thrown well. Tremendous athletic ability there. That's Corey and Corey Freeman. And Freeman coming in. And then the ball just way underthrown. And this will be the third interception. However, Todd Ellis did not throw it. 
So Dedrick Dodge with his fourth of the year. He's run one back for a touchdown. First down Seminole, six and a half left in the half. At their 25, Sammy Smith will keep. And Ron Rabune, the free safety, coming out to the corner, making a nice stop. Ron Rabune, a California boy, hasn't played much lately. When you think about think about that play we just saw, that was a great call. And they bring because as soon as I saw Dingle in the game, I thought it was run. You would think Florida State would be coached to think the same thing, and yet they were there for the pressure and there in the secondary. Tremendous play. Second down and eight. Anthony and Lewis out to the left. Carrying the ball is Marion Butts, the backup fullback. He backs up Dane Williams. Butts has carried the ball now 21 times this year, has a touchdown. He's a 6'1", 248 junior, so he is big. And a flag is on the field and a face mask call. Mistakes keep piling up for the home team. Face mask, five yards on the defense. First 